So I've recently been trying to come up with a way to run a bunch of virtual monitors within a single monitor, and I found a way to do it with XRANDA, so let's have a look. So you may be wondering why I want to do this when I'm using a tiling window manager, and it's actually a fairly simple reason. So as you guys know, with a tiling window manager, it will pretty much just snap your windows along the screen and take up as much space as possible. So this is really good in most situations, but the problem is when you want to do something like recording. So the way that I record right now is I record my laptop screen and I have my TV as my screen that has OBS and all that on it. So what I can do with four virtual monitors is I can have OBS in one quadrant and then record a separate quadrant. So because they're not real monitors, OBS doesn't pick them up properly, but with OBS, you can record a section of your screen. So if I set up a section of my screen that is 1920 by 1080, to you guys, it'll look like I'm just recording my screen. But in reality, what I'm actually doing is recording a small segment of my screen. And what I'm gonna do is replace my TV, which I've got right now, with something like a 65 inch 4K monitor. So what it will effectively give me is four 32 inch 1080p monitors on my desk. And you might say, that's a little dumb. And a 32 inch 1080p monitor is a slightly ridiculous. And you know what, you'd be 100% right, but who else has four 32 inch monitors on their desk? You're not gonna add this many people. I wanna do it because it sounds hilarious and it, I don't know, it sounds fun. Anyway, so I'll actually get to how you do this now. So if we bring up my terminal, it's actually really simple. So you're going to need to have a system that is using Xorg. So if you're not using Xorg, you probably know you're not using Xorg because most things are. I think Ubuntu with GNOME is switching to Wayland at some point or has switched to Wayland, but most systems are using Xorg. So what we're going to use is a program called Xrander. So if you're on Arch, you can get this with Pacman. You just go sudo pacman dash s xorg dash xrander. So this is the official tool to actually modify your render configurations. So I've already got it installed, but if you don't, guys don't have it, then you can install it like that. So it's actually three commands that we're going to do. So I'll bring up my file that I've got uh, in my scripts folder in Vermon. Okay, so I don't actually need this line. So the way that we're going to do this is xrander dash dash set monitor. So if we bring up the man page for xrander and we go set monitor, mon if I can spell, I can never spell, you guys should know this by now. And okay, so set monitor will let you define basically a yeah a new monitor pretty much. You give it a set of geometry points, and then it will create that monitor. So then you give it a name. So I've just named it the adapter name EDP one. EDP is the internal adapter on my laptop. I was just using this on my uh, laptop screen because it's easier to test. Then you give it the width in pixels, the width in millimeters. I'm not sure why it needs that, but just go ahead with it. The height in pixels, the height in millimeters, and then the offset from the top left corner, I believe it is. And then the last option that you provide it is the name of the adapter. And then I did the same thing for the second line, but I neglected to put in the adapter name because if you put in the adapter name, so pretty much what you're doing with this first line is you're reassigning the adapter to this virtual monitor. So you have to then assign your second virtual monitor and any continuous ones after that to have no adapter. Otherwise it just starts replacing the previous ones you put in there because an adapter can only be connected to one monitor. But luckily it doesn't force you to have an adapter. You can just put in the non-option. So this last command here basically will just refresh your xrender config and actually open up the two monitors. So I'll go through this second part in here. This is basically just how to remove your virtual monitors after I've actually run this. So if we run this command, actually no, before we do that, if you don't know how to find your adapter names, that's actually very important and how like high your monitor is because I didn't actually go and just measure my monitor. That would be dumb. So if we just run xrender, 
then that'll actually list out, the, uh, that's my second monitor there. So here is my, my laptop screen. So this will list out the specifications of my laptop screen. So right now it is, so okay, here it is. So 1920 by 1080 by zero by zero. I'm not sure those two last options are. I think those might be the offset options. I'm not 100% sure. So these last points here are your width and your height. And then obviously this first part here is the name of the adapter. So if you weren't sure about what that is, then you can just run XRanda and it'll give out those results for you. You probably know what the adapter name is. If you have more than one HDMI port or you have an EDP port, then it'll be uh, written like this. Uh, the continuous HDMI ports and display ports and DVI and any other adapter standards that come out in the future are then just numbered as you have more of them pretty much. So if we now run that command, so now when, or now on my screen, you should see it's gonna, it's gonna break a little bit because my i3 blocks is designed for one screen at 1080p. So we'll just see what it does. So I don't know if OBS is still working right now because my second screen has just died, but it looks like it's still recording. So I guess we can keep going with this. So if I just chuck my webcam somewhere else on the screen, I'm not actually sure where it is. I can't see it. So <laughs> I might need to address that at some point. So if we look down here, I now have these two, effectively two windows. So it may not look like two windows really, but there are two distinct windows, as you can see from the fact that they have two i3 blocks bars. Okay, so if we want to disable this setup now so I can actually do something useful with this computer, we can rerun uh, Vermon, which will break because i3 blocks doesn't really know, to ha know how to handle being dropped back from a multi-head situation into a single head situation. And then if I refresh my i3 blocks, then that should be back. Sorry for that weird whatever happened just then. I hadn't actually tested it with my second monitor plugged in, so <laughs> I'll need to address that separately. But as you guys saw, it did have two virtual monitors on the screen that I was recording. So I'll now go over the commands that I ran to reset my config to the way it was. It's actually really simple. It's even easier than setting up the multiple screens. So into Vermon, uh, edit anyway. It is incredibly simple. So it is just xrander dash dash Dell monitor and then the name of the monitor. And then the for the second part, it was just the name of the second monitor. So you'll do this for every single virtual monitor that you have. And yeah, that is actually pretty much it. It is occasionally a little weird with i3. Sometimes when I delete the monitors, it doesn't give me back my workspaces. I'm not sure how to address that at this point, but I haven't run into it again after the first time it happened. So it might've just been some weird coincidence that happened. And besides i3, I've heard this doesn't properly work with awesome. So it's possible that it doesn't work with some other window managers. I'm not sure how, different desktop environments are handled with this situation. I, I don't know how GNOME or XFC or anything like that deals with you just directly messing around with XRanda, but i3 handles it fairly well for the most part, except for your i3 blocks being stuck on the same screen when you drop from your multi-head back to a, a single head situation. So if you like this video, remember to smash that like button and leave me a comment down below, letting me know what you think of this. If you have some other use for this, then let me know if, I don't know, maybe you're also running a 4K TV and just splitting it into a ridiculous amount of screens. Or maybe, maybe you're a massive baller and you've got like an 8K TV and you've got like 16 monitors across your, across your desktop. I don't know, that sounds really dumb and I kind of want to do it, but I also don't have the money to buy an 8K TV. So one day, one day when they become commodity items, I'll do that. So if you want to see more from the channel, remember to subscribe and hit the little bell icon down below and maybe you'll see updates, but we can't trust YouTube to actually push them to anyone. So go follow my Twitter and my Mastodon and you actually see updates there. So apart from that, I think that's pretty much it. So I'm out.